bloke. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, man. Look at this. Oh, Lisa just got to tier three. What tier are we on? We are on tier zero. I don't know. No! Okay, we are going to Pod Save America at the Eccles. He's kind of being dragged along. We're slowly, slowly left in don't tell him. He shook his head. <laughs> Are we? All the ways up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know what? You can buy him next time. No, no. I, I actually like the, uh... You're so gonna get us kicked out. We haven't even started. <laughs> what do you get, my eight, maybe? Nice landing. Venerable boss near the front. Oops, that way. And ours. Is that for us? I'm gonna assume that's for us. <laughs> Support for impeachment is growing. On Wednesday, <laughs> on Wednesday, a record 95 Democrats voted to move forward on an impeachment resolution introduced by Representative Al Green of Texas. The House also voted to hold Trump's Attorney General and the Commerce Secretary in criminal contempt of Congress for defying subpoenas about Trump's attempt to break the <laughs> On top of all this. New court documents released today offer more evidence of the president's role as an unindicted co-conspirator in the illegal hush money scheme that landed Michael Cohen in jail. <laughs> and Robert Mueller is testifying next week. <laughs> a lot of crimes, guys. Team voters here in Utah passed a ballot measure that would expand Medicaid to 150,000 people in the state. How did the Republican legislature react to the day? <laughs> <laughs> One legislator said, hey, Rome wasn't built in a day, and it didn't fall in a day. Rome gradually unraveled as a result of inequality, neglect of vital infrastructure, imperial overreaction, and decadence. The point is, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> With grace and humility, accepting the will of the voters. This is the right answer. No need for other kids. Or is it C? Uh, that ballot measure passed in November. The legislature meets in January. If you think I'm gonna stay inside some capital when that mountain is calling my name, bro, nah. I didn't find my next sister boss high boy and drive all the way to Utah to expand Medicaid. I came here to legislate that gnarly fucking pow pow. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, D? 
Republicans in the legislature immediately broke faith with the state's voters, watered down the ballot measure, implemented a much weaker expansion in its place. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is you and Dan? D. D, yeah. Okay. I knew where you were from. <laughs> Question two. In 2018, Senate Representative McCaskill lost a close and hotly contested Senate race. But on that same night, Missouri also passed which three ballot measures today? They passed a resolution declaring both Kansas City style and St. Louis City style barbecue to be the official barbecue of the state. They established regulations to ensure only high quality corn cob pipes could bear the name Missouri. And they passed a law requiring elected officials to pronounce it Missouri. It was a big game for fans of classic Missouri stereotypes. <laughs> or is it B? Legalizing medical marijuana, establishing independent commissions to draw con congressional districts, and raising the minimum wage. Or is it C? Okay, it was pretty intense. The first ballot measure said that Sandra had to admit that the divorce was mutual. <laughs> the second measure said that it was illegal for Sandra to say their mutual friends at the club that Daryl blubbered for a solid two hours. And finally, if Sandra's gonna galvan around town with Ricardo, she could at least not go to Jerry's Fish Fry at a restaurant Daryl introduced her to. It was his place first. <laughs> so was it that or is it D? <laughs> Mandatory biannual fire signature checks in schools, a restructuring of retirement benefits for full-time government employees, and revised summer hours for public parks. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes good government is boring. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you, you got it. <laughs> Stacey, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. I want to start with your personal story because it's what got you deeply involved in the issue of healthcare. In 2010, you were in a car accident. You couldn't go to work anymore. You lost your insurance. What happened? Yeah, I mean, right when I needed healthcare the most is when I didn't have access to it. I had a barrage of new scary symptoms that were disorienting and painful, and I lost my job. I lost my health insurance and realized very quickly I was not the only one in that situation. And so you, you thought you'd be eligible for Medicaid? Yeah, you know, I knew that down the road, I was looking forward to the ACA 2014, that expansion would be implemented and I would finally have access. And then the Supreme Court in 2012 said that it was optional and it became a real partisan dividing line and Utah opted year after year after year against it. And how many people in Utah were in your situation who fell in that Medicaid insurance gap? It depends on the numbers that you look at, but between 150,000 is the number that we campaigned on. And so there's a lot of people in that situation. What, I mean, to give people some context here, the federal government was giving, as part of the Affordable Care Act, free money to states like Utah to cover Right, health insurance for the uninsured in the state. And Utah, like many states with public governments, refused that free money, which is a first in the history of politics. <laughs> and what reasons did the politicians in Utah give for doing that? There was a lot of excuses um, that the funding would go away down the road, that the administration, a, a future administration, would just decide that they would no longer fund it, and Utah would be left holding the bag. And worried about a lot of runaway cost, about people signing up that, that wouldn't need it, or too many. It was politics. But right? it was ideological. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to an ideological divide, not a financial divide. So let's flash forward to 2018. By this time, you're working for the Utah Health Policy Project to pass the Medicaid expansion through ballot initiative. Tell us about what Prop, Prop 3 does and who it impacts. Yeah, so Proposition 3 was a simple, clean Medicaid expansion as called for under the Affordable Care Act. So it covers up to, they, they use the federal poverty line as a marker, so it's 138% of the poverty line. But in reality, that's an individual earning only up to $1,400 a month. It's not much. And so we would expand coverage to people in that low income bracket. And then we also provided a funding mechanism, which is so key that Utahns are so compassionate. They wanted to provide health care for their neighbors, but they also voted to pay for that health care. And
don't forget to like our video, subscribe, and hit the bell.